Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Wired for Hybrid. Uh, it, this is the December 2023 edition, so happy holidays to all of you. And today we're going to talk about um, Azure Monitor Agent. We're going to talk about Express Route. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. So stay tuned. Hey, Michael. Hey, Peter. How, How are you? I'm good. What happened last month? Where, where, what happened? Where did we go? I don't, I can't even believe it's already December. We had, this fall has been crazy. You know, we had Ignite and then, you know, in the U.S., we've got the Thanksgiving holiday. And so I was, I took some time off and I know you had time off and yeah, I was in Mexico on a beach. Yeah. Very cool. And so we, we ended up just kind of pushing this to the end to rush it. And it actually works out pretty well because as people may or may not know, it's not that nobody works in December. It's just towards the end of the year, we don't push anything to production in December. So yeah. from a production standpoint, you're never going to see new features really released in December. That's not really going to happen unless there's, you know, it's a black swan event or something. So, you know, we figured let's just roll up everything for the rest of the year yep. into the episode that we have for you today. And then when we come back in January, chances are we may or may not have something new released but pierre and i have some ideas we've been talking about so we'll definitely have some cool content for you going yep. into the new year absolutely uh which one do you want to do first why don't we talk about my what my one of my favorite services azure virtual network manager as okay. many any of you that listen, follow the show, you've probably seen the deep dive with Andrea. You've heard us talk about this um, on a number of occasions. So at Ignite this year, Virtual Network Manager, the security admin rules went generally available for a select set of regions. Yeah. So it's not fully, fully 100% GA everywhere that Virtual Network Manager is. We're still stepping into, we've got a number of regions. We've got a link to the documentation. So when you go to all the virtual network manager uh, documentation, there'll be a note talking about what's still public preview, what's GA, and also tell you what regions it's available in. So for just kind of a quick recap, remember with security admin roles and virtual network manager, what that allows you to do is it allows you to centralize your security policies across your organization. So it allows you to basically create network groups and then you can group your virtual networks and in one place apply a policy. Let's say you wanna block SSH in your entire organization. Try doing that with NSGs. That's a lot of work. You can absolutely do it and, and customers are doing it. But with Virtual Network Manager, you set it in one place. It applies across your organization, everything that you have covered by Virtual Network Manager. And the beauty of it is when you bring new virtual networks in and they're managed by AVNM, which is the acronym for Virtual Network Manager. We love uh, our acronyms they will automatically be brought in. So it really allows you to streamline. So we're really excited that we're finally getting this out to some regions as GA. And hopefully it, sometime this spring, we'll have mesh um, topology going GA as well. So I'm expecting by summer that the full product, everything in it's gonna be GA for most of the regions that it's currently in. Yeah, the, the, the thing that I love the most about, I think, um, the admin rules is 
in a large footprint uh, organization, when you have different departments and different owners, there might be a hundred different people that will deploy virtual networks for for testing, for development, for uh, campaigns or workloads that are like short lived and so on. Well, what if one of those people want to um, like spin up a new VM and then a, a network, and then they they enable SSH and you've decided that, no, nope, it's not going to fly in our environment because of security concern or whatever it may be. Well, now they, they, that rule applies to their, to their network, but they can't change it, even though they own the virtual network that they've just created. They may be the owner of that resource, but they can't change that resource, uh, that, uh, that NSG. So to me, that's uh, that's really good for like central IT to maintain control over everything. Absolutely. And, you know, kind of related to it, but a little bit different is one of the things you can also do with security admin rules is, and this has been something we've heard from our customers that they weren't quite sure of. So we've made some changes in the documentation to hopefully highlight it, is the ability to create ex exceptions. So let's say we have that, we blanket SSH across the environment yeah. blocked. However, we have a set of virtual networks that's, that is used by, say, an application team. And in order to manage their applications, they need to use SSH. Through priorities, we can create a rule there. And then what you can then do is you centralize your global policies with security admin rules but then you can also still allow those yep. groups at the NIC or the subnet level to be able to use NSGs to be able to manage their environment. So, But that's exception-based, so it's absolutely. good because central IT still maintains control. Exactly. Yeah. We are still that's maintaining fantastic. control. Yep. No, I can't wait for this to be like worldwide and everywhere. It's yeah, it's cool. a whole product. Yep. So what do you uh, got for me? Yeah, so I'm going to start with uh, one of my, um, one of the areas that I've been concentrating on lately, which is uh, Azure Monitor. Uh, so now there is integration between Azure Monitor, uh, the agent really, and Connection Monitor. So if we're looking at monitoring a virtual network, for everything else, we've said, hey, go to Azure Monitor, it's everything's there. And then Azure Monitor, down in the menu, there's like Network Watcher and Connection uh, Troubleshooter and stuff like that, which takes you to the Network Watcher uh, application. Now the integration has been done so that Connection Monitor will detect um, network connectivity uh, performance, but in real time, and provide the like packet loss latency uh, to to Azure Monitor to actually allow you to um, localize where the offending network or or where the problem is. Uh, so that makes it that your time to resolve any networking issue is much, much shorter. Uh, because it's now integrated with Azure Monitor, alerting is a lot easier. Um, it applies to Arc enabled, to uh, Azure VMs or Azure virtual networks, to uh, on-prem uh, machines or environments as like as as destinations and sources and destination, um, and it also in, enhances your security through uh, managed identity. So you can manage identity in terms of uh, Azure AD tokens and stuff like that. And there are still more stuff on the roadmap that's going. So check out the um, the announcement in the show notes below um, for what's what's the, what's coming in terms of integration. So they're, they've done some of it, but there's more to come. Um, the the one thing that I'm super happy about is seeing that we're now kind of consolidating all of the monitoring functions under one umbrella as opposed to having to go to network watcher for your network you have to go to uh vm insights for your vm like it's all going to be a, a visible and exposed single pane of glass in azure monitor and everything that's in azure monitor as like the reporting alerting and so on 
uh, dashboarding, now it can be basically brought up in one local one location. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, yep. I can I can see a lot of people out there just being like, okay, thank you for finally bringing these all things together. Because we hear that all the time is like, yeah. I got to go over here. I got to go over here. Got to go over here. That bringing this monitoring for networking is so critical. And it's not just for making sure your users get to their applications, you know, proper networking is necessary for your yep. security as well. And, you know, basically your business showing up. So all very cool stuff. And, you know, definitely look forward to, you know, continued uh, integrations with all of these inside Azure Monitor. So if all, all of you out there looking for something new to, to spend some time on next, next year, Azure Monitor is probably a tool. If you haven't spent time with it, you probably need to uh, skill up on that. So we'll make sure to in the in the show notes, we'll make sure to leave some links to some good articles and some training guides on Microsoft Learn to get you started with Azure Monitor. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, what's your second uh, item? So my second item, I actually have two. And they're both related to ExpressRoute. So okay. the first one is with ExpressRoute, Direct, and Circuit in different subscriptions. So this was announced at Ignite. So now with ExpressRoute, ExpressRoute Direct customers are going to be able to manage their network costs by connecting across subscriptions. So they can have one port, Express Route Direct port for their connectivity, but then they can have multiple circuits going across their subscriptions. Previously, you had to have the circuit and the direct port within the same subscription. Yep. And then you did some funky stuff with authorizations and some other virtual networks and, you know, probably stood on your head and, you know, tapped your uh, heels twice and made it happen. Now, now you have the ability to do that across subscriptions. So for those of you that, you know, just a quick recap, remember Express Route Direct is that service that gets you directly into the Microsoft Cloud. So this is gonna give you either 10 or 100 gigabit per second speed into Azure. So this is gonna be for your really big workloads yep. and you know where you're pushing a lot of data or you just have like a lot of clients and things like that. For this, it does require, and it's gonna be pricier. If you look at the price sheet, it is, pretty pricey, but for the organizations that need this, you know, it's probably worthwhile. It does require you to have an express route direct port and then the express route circuit that goes with it. And that's gonna be the premium, the express route uh, premium circuit that goes yeah, with but, that. But then you can only have, you have one and you can have multiple subscriptions as opposed to having one per subscription. So really, is yep. it is it more expensive or is it just like I don't know? I haven't done the math. Yeah, um, yeah, I haven't I haven't done the math either. But I I would assume from I would assume from a cost standpoint, you know, it's probably going to be better for you because there probably are people that have put out multiple because they needed them in multiple subscriptions or they couldn't figure yep. out how to get them connected. Um, but at least it's going to centralize be able to centralize that so that you could you can manage the security of your express route direct port in a single place. Yep. So I've got some good articles for you that you can check out on that. And then the second going along with this on express route, express route is now a trusted service in Azure. So what that means is that Oftentimes, there's times where the services, you can't apply certain policies to them. There's just simply the way things work in our networking, you can't 
some policies don't apply. So with trusted service, this allows you to store your secrets for express route connections into Azure in a key vault and have that locked down and not available publicly, but express route can still get to those and use the the connection connectivity access keys and names to yep. to be able to make those um, connections, which I, I think is just you know very similar to like what you were mentioning with Azure Monitor. This really continues. One of the things we talk about almost in every show is we continue to not just push out new products, is to continue to push out to you features that make it easier for you to connect your hybrid environment in a secure way. So this yeah. is just another one of those tools in your toolbox if you're an Express Route customer to be able to use that to um, maintain you know, your secrets inside of Azure Key Vault. Yeah, anytime, anytime you can uh, put your like password certificates, secrets so of any of any kind uh, in a, in a key vault. It's so much better than. A, I, was, I, I was reading an article not too long ago about secrets, like a scan of secrets in public repos. Uh, yeah. Not a great idea. Anyway, yeah. but the, like this one is consolidating all of the. Uh, secrets across all of Azure uh, in in the Key Vault. Um, it's not complete yet. We're not consolidated everything, but we're working towards that. So that's fantastic. Very good. Yep. So what do you? What else you got on the horizon? Okay, I got a couple more, but uh, let's go for one uh, which is very short, or short and sweet. It's not a huge uh, change, but it is one that uh, will have significant impact. Uh, which is the using a common port for private and public listeners when you're uh, using an application gateway. Because normally what you would have to do is, if you have an application gateway, if you have the listeners, you have a port on the public side and a port on the private side, but you couldn't use the same one. So you'd end up using like this standard port in one, and then you did make up uh, a, a high port and you'd kind of like, a non-standard port for the outside. But you anytime you're using non-standard stuff, you have to document it somewhere because somebody else is going to have to look at it. Um, the people on the other end that are building the application have to know what port you're using. But so for now, uh, GA uh, this month or last month, uh, you can now have that same port both internally and externally. So configuring the same port, public and private listeners for your application gateway, it gives you an easy single application gateway deployment uh, method. So both internet facing and internal facing. So you don't need to use those standard or non-standard port uh, for your backend application. So not a huge change, but significant in terms of not having to manage non-standard stuff all all over the place. Absolutely, that's awesome. That's good stuff. You know, yep. continuing to make people's lives easier. Yeah, that's what and my, that's what you and I are here for to make all of you out there's lives easier. And all of you can make it easier by hitting the like button and letting us know what you want to hear. Yes, absolutely. And my last one is uh, one of our um, regular the uh, web application firewall, uh, the so application gateway web application firewall, you now have a rate limiter. What that means is you can assign uh, and configure a rate limit on your uh, regional web application firewall running on the application gateway, and it allows you to detect and block uh, type of traffic that's like abnormally high. So you're not you're not sure if it's like a DDoS attack or something like that, but the, the traffic is like suddenly spiking and it's unusually high. So what you can do with that is now you rate limit you apply a rate limit to that uh to that uh type of traffic. So now it just throttles it. 
so that you can avoid and you protect, protect yourself for denial of service attack, uh, clients that have accept, accidentally been misconfigured, uh, whatever the, the, the case may be when they send a large volumes of requests in short periods uh, for your front end or your back end. So you can now apply rate limits rules to your web application firewall. Again, not a huge thing, but one that will have significant impact on your the way you manage your environment. Very cool. Great ads. Great stuff. Great show. Yeah. Uh, how about you? You're all. Oh, that was it for you for for that us. Because I did. I did. I did two for one. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I thought that um, considering that we skipped last month, that this show would be like significantly longer. But as you mentioned, since we don't have anything rolling out uh, in December. Or we don't have a lot rolling out in December because nobody rolls out in production on Friday at two o'clock in the afternoon when everybody's going to leave at four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've all we've all done this in our in the past in the IT lives where somebody makes a change at the last day on uh, last hour on Friday. Yep. 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 Well, cool. Anyway. Uh, Make sure to check out the show notes or the blog uh, on uh, itopstalk.com uh, uh, where we'll have all of the links and all of the information about the products and the uh, new functionality we've discussed today. As Michael mentioned, please tell us in the comments what you would like. If there's any deep dives you'd like us to look at, is there? if you have any questions in regards to Azure networking, and we'll make sure to cover that. Uh, like and subscribe because it helps us, it helps the channel, and uh, tells us whether or not we're hitting the mark with you. So, Michael, Absolutely. happy holidays. Happy the holidays to you too, my friend. And, you know, enjoy your, uh, enjoy some time off, which I will be enjoying as well. And uh, look forward to talking to you in the new year. Yes. And for all of you as well at home, um, yep. happy holidays to you too. And we'll see you in. 2024 already can't believe it yep all right see everyone bye yeah